Hey everybody, glad that you've tuned in today. You know, recently I've really been stirred by the life of Joshua in the Old Testament. Matter of fact, it's been going on for months and I preached a full length sermon about this topic at the church at Winder where I serve as pastor. And I also released it on our hour long broadcast of Transforming Truth. But I felt like God wanted me to take 30 more minutes and bless you today with this truth from the life of Caleb from the book of Joshua chapter number 14. So today I wanna to talk to you about getting to the top of your mountain, join me in this episode of Truth Shots. All right, so Joshua chapter number 14, I'm going to begin reading in verse number six. We're going to talk about an old man named Caleb, whose life is incredibly inspiring. Follow along with me while I read verses six through 15 in the book of Joshua chapter number 14. It says in verse number six that the people of Judah came to Joshua at Gilgal. And Caleb, he's our main star of this message, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to Joshua, you know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God in Kadesh Barnea concerning you and me. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. But my brothers who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. Yet I wholly followed the Lord, my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land on which your foot has trodden shall be an inheritance for you and your children forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. Then Caleb continues, he says to Joshua, Now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, just as he said these 45 years since the time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel walked in the wilderness. And now behold, I am this day 85 years old. I'm still as strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. My strength now is as my strength was then for war and for going and coming. So now give me this hill country of which the Lord spoke on that day. For you have heard on that day how the Anakim, those are the giants, how the giants were there with great fortified cities. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall drive them out just as the Lord said. Then Joshua blessed him and he gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, for an inheritance. Therefore, Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord, the God of Israel." Friends, I can't tell you how excited I am to share this because this is not some history lesson about Caleb and Old Testament Israel. It, sure, we're going to talk about him, but I'm going to tell you, I've got the Holy Spirit stirring in me right now that this is a message for you and the rest of your life. You see, I believe this firmly, that the Lord Jesus Christ died not merely to take us to heaven. Please, we've got to do away with the idea that the only reason Jesus came, lived, died, rose again was to take us to heaven. That's not even what Jesus said. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. That means your life is one of destiny, abundant destiny. There's an inheritance. There's something that God has for you as a child of God. And so we've got to recognize that until we get to the top of the mountain that God has promised us, then we're coming up short of what he has. Now, here's the good news. You may be tempted to fear. Oh, I've missed my opportunity. I'm, I'm older now. I should have done it when I was younger and I should have done it in this season or this season. And I'm, I, the door has closed. Well, I just want to challenge that because Caleb is 85 years old before he steps up to the top of the mountain of the inheritance that God had for him. So let's walk through these verses together. Pay particular attention to some of the conditions that are required for you and I to get to the top of the mountain that God has had waiting for you and I. So I'm going to begin at the very beginning of verse number six. It's very important that we embrace this. This is an important part of you stepping into the fullness of your inheritance. What am I talking about? Well, we're going to look at what it means to be waiting. And this is the timing of Caleb's breakthrough. So Caleb is the example, but the message is not just historical. It's for your life and my life. But waiting is an important part. The truth of the matter is breakthrough, inheritance, and fullness doesn't always come easy. It's often after a long period of waiting. Where do I see that? The beginning of verse six. It says, then... 
Mark that word then. Then the people of Judah came to Joshua at Gilgal and Caleb said to Joshua, that's where I want to start. The then marks something that we need to know. When you see then in the Bible, you need to ask the question, when? What's been going on? What is the timing? Well, let me give you four things here. For Israel, it had been a long period of waiting, and for Caleb in particular, there had been a time of wavering. If you'll remember, Caleb and Joshua were two of the 12 spies that 40 years earlier got up to the edge of the promised land. God said, go in there, kill the giants, take the cities. That's your inheritance. But 10 of the 12 spies were intimidated. They were faithless. They were fearful. And so they wavered. And because of that, God did not allow Israel to immediately go into the promised land. So Caleb's delay was not his own fault. It was other people around him and circumstances that caused him to wait. And so that waiting and that wavering became wandering. You see, Israel was sentenced to wander in the desert for 40 years. Why? Because God said, all of you who didn't believe me, 20 years old and over, you're going to die in the wilderness. What's the lesson there? Well, the sentence for unbelief, the verdict, the penalty for unbelief is you live in a barren desert until you die. Now, no, none of us signed up for that. And so it's all the more important that we recognize we got to have faith to step into the fullness of the inheritance. Otherwise, life becomes like a wandering in the wilderness. And that's not God's will for any of us. And so, again, that wa- wavering and that wandering resulted in waiting. 40 years in the wilderness. And then once they got into the promised land, it was five more years of waiting because they were fighting the enemy. So the waiting became warring. Are you following the pattern here? Wavering, wandering, waiting, and then warring. What do I mean by warring? So Caleb finally gets into the promised land at 80 years old. But God doesn't immediately give him his mountain. Why? Because there's still battles to be fought before Caleb can get the fullness of his inheritance. So for five more years, from age 80 to 85, Caleb is in there swinging the sword. He's killing the Philistines. He's destroying those that hate God and hate God's purpose. And he's literally in a military battle fighting along with 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, and 40-year-olds. And he's 80 years old, but he hasn't given up hope yet. How can a man that old continue to pursue what the Lord has is because he never lost his vision, as we're going to see. He never lost his confidence in God. He never lost his desire. Though he had to wait, though he had to deal with unbelief all around him, he knew what God had promised him, and he knew that God wasn't done with him yet. So let's go to the second part of this, because you move from the waiting portion, and let's unpack that warring portion. Warring is the testing of Caleb's breakthrough. Let me just say this right before I get into these verses. A lot of people want breakthrough. A lot of people want God's mountain. A lot of people want to get to the top and inheritance and glory and destiny and everything that God has for them. There's nothing wrong with that desire. But let me add something. If I'm being honest, a lot of people want it to come easy. A lot of people don't want to fight for it. A lot of people want God to hand it to them because they've been spoiled. They've been trained that whatever we want, we get and somebody better make it happen for us. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you if you feel that way. That's not the way it works in the kingdom. Why? Because sometimes you have to war for it. I'll even strengthen it. When it's God's best for your life, you always have to war for it. You got to go to battle. You got to fight. Why? Because the enemy doesn't want you stepping into the fullness of your inheritance. The enemy, Satan, and the whole demonic realm, they don't want you getting into the glorious inheritance that God has for you. They don't want you stepping into the purpose that God has for you. Why? Because a Christian who's not living out the purposes of God for their life is no threat to Satan. But the Christian who looks at the top of the mountain says, I will receive all that the Lord has for me. I will fulfill the purpose that he has for me. I will be the woman or the man that he's called me to be. That person is a threat to the enemy. So he makes war against that type of Christian. My question is, even though he's going to fight you, don't you still want it? Don't you still want the best that God has? Well, Caleb certainly did. So it says, Caleb does a little history lesson with Joshua here. So in verses six into verse seven, this is what Caleb says. God, Caleb reminds Joshua that 40 years earlier, God had appointed Caleb. This is what he says. He says, Joshua, you know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God concerning you and me. 
Joshua, your mind's good. You remember what Moses said, speaking for God to you and to me. He said, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. Now, it's very interesting. I don't have time to unpack it. But in Numbers 14, the book of Numbers, chapter number 14 and verse number 24, God speaks of Caleb like God Almighty said, let me tell you something about Caleb. He said, Caleb had a different spirit than all of these others. And he followed me fully because of that. I will bring Caleb into the land that he went and his descendants shall possess it. So there was a prophetic promise from God over Caleb's life. And no matter the waiting, no matter the wavering of the people around Caleb, no matter the warfare that Caleb had to get into, Caleb held on that he had a calling, he had a promise, he had a word from the Lord, and he reminded Joshua, Joshua, you remember what God said through Moses about me? He said that I followed him with my whole heart. Therefore, Joshua, that mountain over there belongs to me. So Caleb had faithfully responded when they were at Kadesh Barnea on that 40 years earlier and they went up to spy out the land. Caleb and Joshua were the only two that had faith. But real quick here, we need leaders that have faith. We don't need leaders that play it safe. You don't need a pastor or a prophet or an apostle or a teacher that is just always trying to make you feel comfortable and safe and cozy. That's not the kingdom. Now, whereas as a pastor, I need to be compassionate, and nice, but also as a leader, I need to look people in the eye and say, listen, Jesus Christ died for you, rose for you, put his spirit in you. You've got purpose. You've got meaning. You've got power. Get up and do something with your life. And so Caleb had received that. And he said, I brought God word again. I brought the word when I went out to spy the land that I fought, wholly followed the Lord, my God. I wholly followed the Lord, my God. That's one of the keys to claiming your mountain, to stepping up and getting to the top of your mountain. One of the keys is that you have to wholly follow the Lord. You can't be wishy-washy. You can't be in and out. You can't be a person that one day is on fire and the next day is a smoldering blanket of ooze. You've got to say, Jesus is worth it. He owns me. He bought me. I'm going to serve him. And I believe he's going to reward me not only in this life, but in the life to come. Caleb believed all of that. But he did indicate this in verse eight. He said, but the guys that went up with me, they made my brothers. Listen, these were leaders, fellow leaders. He said, my brothers who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. Ten of the 12 leaders came back and told everybody, we can't do what God said we would do. We can't conquer the giants. We can't destroy the enemy. We can't take the territory. That's what they had said. And they were the leaders for crying out loud. But Joshua and Caleb had a different spirit and they said, no, we'll do it. But unfortunately, the whole entire nation of Israel who listened to the 10 unbelieving leaders suffered the consequences. And because of that, Caleb had to suffer, too. What do I mean? That's why Caleb was for forced to wait 40 years until all the unbelieving people died off. And finally, they entered the promised land, fought for five years to be able to subdue the land. And so we get down to the part that I really, really want to get to. And that's in this winning aspect. So remember, waiting, you're going to have to wait sometimes. Warring, you can't ever give up. You got to fight the devil. You got to fight people sometimes. You got to fight your own flesh. You got to fight the, the culture. You got to fight to get to the top of your mountain. Maybe that's the whole message today. Some of you have exited the fight. Some of you got weary. Some of you got discouraged. Some of you got tired. Listen, get back in the fight. God's not done with you yet. You don't need somebody else's permission. You don't need a move and a second and a majority vote. The majority vote in this passage of scripture, well, the majority vote was faithless. So we don't need people to vote on whether or not you and I are going to do God's will for our lives. All we need is the promise from the Lord, the power of the Holy Spirit, the guidance of the word of God. And man, the whole world is open up to us. So what did it look like for Caleb to start winning? Well, let's get down to these last handful of verses. And I'm going to take my time through here because this is important. This is where I'm going to not only challenge you, but I'm going to encourage you. And I'm actually going to pastor you for a few minutes, if you'll let me. This is the winning. And this is the triumph of Caleb's breakthrough. He had to war. That's where it was tested. He had to wait. That was the timing of it. But now he's about to win. And this is the triumph of everything that he's been waiting for and warring for. Now he's going to win it. 
And friends, that's where you and I have to get to. We've got to remember that we are overcomers. We've got to remember that the Lord of glory promised that in the end, as we follow him, we will win. We will step up and step out in a complete victory. That what God has promised us as his children is ours. And nobody gets to undermine that. The difficulty is realizing this, that God can promise it. God can provide for it. But if you don't believe him, you'll never get to the top of your mountain. That's the part where Caleb is inspiring me to never quit, never give up. When I get discouraged, get up again and get reacquainted with the promises and the refreshing power of God and keep going for the inheritance that God has. So let's look at this. In verse number 10, again, we see the long delay before the blessing came. The long delay. Listen to Caleb's own words. He says, and now, so he's in the present tense. He had been looking back to their history, but he's in the present moment. Verse 10, he says, now the Lord has kept me alive, just as he said, these 45 years since the time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel was in the wilderness. And now behold, I am this day 85 years old. Guys, if that doesn't rob us of all of our excuses, you know, the older you get, the more tempting it is to think the best of your time has gone behind you. The best of your life has gone behind you. Caleb said, oh, no, time out. This is what I've been working for my whole life. Forty five years. Now, that's not a short time to wait and to fight for your inheritance. But guys, let me just ask you this. What if it takes five years? What if it takes 10 more years from you? What if it takes 15 or 20 more years of you and I trusting the Lord, doing the right thing, walking in holiness, walking in faith, walking in love, doing what we can do while we're waiting for our breakthrough? What if that's what it takes? Are you still going to be there when the timing comes? Man, I hope so. Think about this with Caleb. If anybody had an excuse to not fight for the best that God had for his life, it was Caleb. Let me just read you this. I wrote this down. And I, even as I wrote it, I was like, wow, he could have quit a hundred times over and nobody would have thought anything about it because he had a really rough life. Think about it. He was born as a slave, as a son of slaves in Egypt. That's where Caleb was born. He was born in Egypt as a slave to the son, as a son to other slaves. His grandparents were slaves. His great grandparents were slaves. 400 years of slavery. And all Caleb was, was an Egyptian slave. And then he lived the first 40 years of his life. He wasn't a little kid only. He was an adult. 40 years of his life. The first 40 years of his life as a slave. He woke up every day. He had no freedom. He had no rights. He had no abilities to do what he wanted to do. He just made bricks and built pyramids in Egypt. That's all the Jews did when they were in slavery. But he experienced deliverance from slavery by God's supernatural leadership of Moses when the Red Sea was split. So he saw a miracle at the age of 40 years old, and he's finally gotten free out of Egypt's slavery. And then they're moving towards the promised land, but on the, on the edge of full victory, Caleb was heartbreakingly outvoted along with Joshua by 10 other leaders who had zero faith. Imagine how his heart broke. They're free. He's about to step in the promised land, but he gets outvoted by the people around him. And his destiny was pushed on pause through no fault of his own. A lot of people quit right there. A lot of people will say, well, I was pursuing the Lord, but somebody got in the way. Somebody abandoned me. Somebody betrayed me. Somebody did me wrong. Somebody let me down and therefore I quit. Well, listen, Caleb was made of better stuff. Remember, the Lord said he had a different spirit about him. You know, people that have a different spirit about them never quit easy for people to quit in our day. There's a whole lot of excuses, a whole lot of reasons to quit. But those who have a different spirit, they may get discouraged. But when they get a word like this, they'll say, you know what? I shouldn't let that person's discouragement keep me down. I'm going to fight. I'm going to get back up. And that's what Caleb did. And so he was forced to wander in a wasteland for 40 years. That's a long time to wait. It's a long time for your destiny to be out there on the horizon. You can't quite grab it yet. It's a long time to fight discouragement and to keep believing. But he did. And then at 80 years old, he finally gets into the promised land. But he still doesn't get his mountain yet. Why? 
Well, because there's a lot of other people that need their territory too. And Caleb's got to fight alongside of them to subdue the enemy everywhere in the promised land. So he couldn't just say, look, I'm an old guy. I've done my time. I've I've put in my time. I've tried my best. You guys go fight the land. But I've, I've waited 40 years for my mountain. I want it today. Caleb, a totally different spirit than those around him, said, no, I want to fight with my brothers and help them step into their inheritance. And when then we get the land subdued, then I'll come back and get my mountain. And so he declared at 85 years old, Joshua, I still want what God promised me. I want that mountain. I want that hill territory. I saw it 45 years ago. God said it's mine. And here I am today and I want it. So back to the verses as I wrap up here. Caleb had, as we see in verse number 11, what I call a lasting desire to receive the blessing. That's my question for you. Do you still want it? So, Jeff, what are you talking about? Well, let's look at it. Caleb says, I'm still as strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. My strength now, present tense, is as my strength was then, past tense, for war and for going and coming. I love this. Man, I'm so motivated. I hope this is motivating you. Caleb had not lost his vision. He had not lost his desire. He had also not lost his confidence. Now, really quickly here, a lot of people didn't lose the vision of what God had promised. A lot of people can still see it today. They say, yeah, I know what God said. I know what it looked like. I remember how fresh it was in my heart when I first got that vision or that calling or that promise or that word or that prophecy over my life. I, 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 I can tell you today how I felt in that moment. I, I can still see it. Other people say, yeah, I can not only still see it, but I still want it. Man, I, I still believe God can do that. I still believe that, that that's still in effect, but it's been a long time and it hasn't materialized yet. But man, if God wants to do it, hey, I'm still here. I'd love to see it. But in the meantime, I've got to do this and I've got to do this and I've got to do this. And you, you get to the point where you wait so long. It's not that you necessarily lose your desire, but you lose this third and most important piece because you can have the vision for it. You can have the desire for it. But here's the key. Do you still have the faith for it? Do you still have the confidence that God will do what God said he will do? Caleb had all three. He had the vision and he had the desire. But if he had the vision and the desire, but didn't have the confidence, guess what? He never would have gotten the territory assigned to him. He never would have gone up that mountain. Why? Because he still needed to know that God was with him. After all the waiting, after all the warring, After all the wandering that had to take place, he never lost his confidence, no matter how bad things got on the outside, that his God was still for him and still with him. That's why he was able to say, I can go today as strong as I could have gone 40 years ago. Joshua, you're my human leader and I'm asking your permission. I'm asking for your blessing. Will you release me right now to to claim everything that I was promised so long ago. And he says, because I know God's going to do it. Now, Joshua, of course, is going to tell him yes. And I'll just go ahead and get to the end of the story. Joshua and and releases Caleb and Caleb does go up the mountain, but it's going up the mountain. This is the last part I want to give you before we close out today. This is so important. He says this in verse number 12. He says, now give me this hill country. I like the King James version. That's where I first learned this passage says, give me my mountain. Give me the mountain of which the Lord spoke on that day. You heard on that day how the Anakim were there with great fortified cities. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I will drive. I shall drive them out just as the Lord said. Now, let me just finish right here. So Caleb's getting permission from Joshua, but notice what he says. He says, my inheritance is at the top of that hill. My inheritance is at the top of that mountain. And everything I've ever been promised and everything I've waited for, everything I've fought for is at the top of the mountain and I want it. And Joshua is going to tell him yes, but I love what Caleb knows. Caleb knows it's going to be an uphill fight. The very last leg of the race, he's got to get from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain. Some of you may have military background and you know that the position of advantage in a military hand to hand combat is to be on the top and your enemy at the bottom. Well, in this, it was reversed. Caleb was at the bottom and had to climb up the mountain. But not only was it an uphill climb, there were giants all along the way. 
The Anakim, that's the Hebrew word, refers to a race of giants. They were vicious. They were strong. They were intimidating. They were threatening. And they were in between Caleb and his inheritance. And Caleb said, I don't care. I know it's going to be an uphill fight. I know it's going to be hard. I know that there's enemy that's going to try to stop me from getting to the top. He said, Joshua, I don't care. The Lord shall give me the victory. And guys, that's exactly what happened. Caleb went up that mountain. If you want to read further in the book of Joshua, chapter 15 and 16, you'll find out that Caleb had to fight and defeat three named giants. He killed all three of them, got to the top of the mountain, and he and his descendants got to enjoy the full destiny of what God had promised. I'm going to tell you this as we say goodbye. If it takes 45 years, it's worth it. If it takes a lot of waiting and a lot of warfare for you to step into everything that God has for you, it's worth it. And if you've been discouraged, tired, feel like it passed you by and you missed your opportunity, that's all a lie of the devil. You can step into the fullness of your inheritance right now by keeping the vision, by keeping the desire, and most importantly, keeping the confidence that God's not done with you yet. And so that's what it looks like to get to the top of your mountain. And I'm going to bless you in the name of Jesus right now. If you're in a season right now where you're, and maybe even in this moment, you're being stirred by the word of the Lord and the testimony of Caleb, maybe you recognize right now, you know what? God's not done with me. You know what? If God's promise hasn't been fulfilled yet, then it's not God's fault. The timing may be right now. And Lord, I'm willing to wait a little longer. I'm willing to war a little harder. Even if I have to go uphill at this last leg of the journey, even if I have to fight a few more giants, then Lord, that's what I'm willing to do. And I'm going to trust you that you shall get me on the top of that mountain. And so in the name of Jesus, I bless you right now with a desire. Don't lose your desire. I bless you right now with a renewed vision, go back and revisit the promise of God on your life. Whether it came through reading the word and the Holy Spirit said that's for you, whether it came through a Holy Spirit calling in your own heart, or maybe it came through a prophetic word that somebody else gave you, get reacquainted with it and believe. And then I bless you in the name of Jesus to believe that God will do it. Don't doubt God anymore. He's not mad at you. He's not upset, but he wants to take you to the top of the mountain and he can't do it unless you step out one foot in front of the other. Do what you can do and trust God to do what only God can do. And he'll put you on the top of that mountain. I can't wait to meet you there. I'm going for mine and I hope you'll go for yours. God bless you. And we'll see you next time on Truth Shots.